now we start a new video. So now we are uh, booting up into Fedora 21, and it's almost there. I'll show the boot screen, the last part of it there. And uh, this is on the Dell 1525 laptop. And I'm getting ready to run Clam AV and scan my Windows 7 partitions. I have a FAT32 with uh, some boot, boot files and stuff, and then I have uh, uh, NTFS with Windows 7 on it. And uh, also, this is, I have dual monitors here. Well, I mean, I have Windows, the laptop monitor, laptop screen, and my big monitor. Okay, now it's ready for me to log in. I have to do this one handed here. I think I got it. The way I hold the f the uh, phone, I'm always afraid I'm going to have my finger over the camera, but I'm doing okay so far. So there's my uh, pet project. Oh no, that's not mine, is it? That is the uh, business end of uh, space shuttle being worked on there in the factory somewhere, or maybe not the factory, but I don't know if that's one that's being built or being maintained. Got some cool shots somewhere from NASA. So anyway, we're going to go, uh, where's Clam? I don't have it up there. So, there it is, Clam AV. <coughs> oh yeah, and I'll have to mount my, I don't have my uh, Windows partitions mounted automatically. I just do them when I need them. Let's see. It's going to take a minute to open that up. Let's see if I can get to them. Oh, there. It already opened up. I'm just going to set the way I like to have it. Just report. And then it will actually be in run media when it gets when I get it mounted. Which is not even there until you kind of weird media. It used to be on what made a lot more sense. Your, everything used to mount. Well, it, but when I first started in Linux with the Fedora 5, it used to, everything would mount and mount, MNT mount, and then they started mounting everything in media. But uh, now, whoops, now for some reason Fedora switched it over to, Debain hasn't done that, it's still where, where it make, makes sense. Uh, they It's run and then it'll be run media when there's something mounted. So let me get over here and um, let's see uh, NTFS. I have to type in my root password again. That's my Windows drive, and then Xboot is my 32-bit. Once you type it in, it keeps it. So there those are. Now that's all I needed. I don't need to see them. Now you should see media right there. There they are. So I can just click on media and get them all. Now what else? Just report. Oh yeah, update. It normally updates manually, but I always want to make sure it takes a good little while. Let's see, what's this? Oh, during the previous startup, K notify crash. Do you want to try again or disable air route sound output? Oh, that's something that happens sometimes. I don't know what does that. Something to do with my sound. I've never had any problem with my sound, but it does that. Database updated. Yes, yeah, so it updated while I was doing everything else. Sometimes it takes a good while. Okay, so. I just report and now get started. Now it'll sit there and calculate how long to scan forever, so I always say bypass. And it'll go straight to scanning. Because, I mean, if you spent 30 minutes plus trying to find out how long it's going to take, you could already been scanning, right? So it will scan for however long it takes. Could be 20 minutes, could be an hour. 
Here in a minute, you'll see some files running across there. Yeah, we're beginning to. Uh, actually, we won't see any up in the window until there's something that has a problem or a question. Now, when you scan a Linux system, you can have all anything that's Java will show up as uh, questionable. This will report. That's why I have it just report and not do anything because you have to manually get in there and say. Uh, you have to kind of know what you're doing. You have to get it, you know, Linux and Windows. This, I'm only scanning Windows this time, so uh, it's already, it's in Xboot downloads right now. I can see that. Anyway, you got to get in there and manually tell it what to do, uh, and you need to uh, have some idea about whether or not the file's real. You know, it just tells you this is what might have a problem, basically. Well, that's not true. The ones that have root kits or anything like that. It'll say rootkit. It'll tell you exactly what it is, give you the name. Here's one for instance, Heuristics Broken Executable. Now that is usually nothing to worry about. If if it's a Linux file, I always slide those over where it's kind of like that. But I don't think it'll, yeah, it will come up. So that's, uh, yeah, RPM prep USB. That is a Linux, uh, I believe it's like a gzip file or whatever uh, on the Windows. This is a, this is Clam AV and it runs on Linux, but it, uh, yeah, I don't know how to say it right, so I won't say it. But anyway, the broken, broken, it's not a broken executable. If you know it's not broken, you know it works. You know that, right? Okay. So, uh. But a broken executable can be an infected file. If it's a broken Windows executable, then it may very well be. It either ain't going to work or it's a infected, so you don't really want it. But if it's a Linux file, then most likely it's uh, false positive. See, it says four viruses problem slash problems found. So this will take a while. So I'm going to stop this video and I'll probably come back once it gets done. Let's see if it shows up anything else. If it doesn't, then I have to go in there and try to figure out what it is it's running, see if it's something I can just stop from running, doing that 50%. It could be a bug or something, or, or just a broken executable that's causing it, because I was reading about that whole uh, SV host, and, well, it I didn't show it, I'll have to show it, but you can right click on the one, the one that, you know, any of them, and find out. Uh, it was. I saw that it was hung up, waiting on some other file that had an error, and I killed the other file, but it didn't make any difference. So that's why I went ahead and started doing these virus scans and everything. So anyway, I may have to get back into that. Okay, this is done. Bye bye.